Hey, good afternoon. Bill Drakeley from Watershape University. Uh, we are at a Shotcrete shoot, and this video and this uh, educational opportunity is talking about concrete installation without any cold joints. And we have an existing pool shell, nice pool shell, good and hard, uh, good compressive value, 6,000 PSI. But we as a company don't have enough concrete on one of the walls. So we're going to shoot concrete on one of the exterior walls and bring it out to full thickness without having a cold joint, without having any type of seam and have, making it monolithic. So let's take a look at that and let's begin. Okay, here we are with the top side of the pool shell. Uh, pool's exposed, we're gonna have an exposed exterior surface for the client. Kind of a uh, modernistic approach with concrete and have a, it's gonna have a coating, a, a plaster coating on the outside, uh, specifically designed for exterior use. But this wall here, we have 10 inches thick and it's supposed to be 12. We had to move some strings and the elevation was lowered by the uh, client and just with the busyness of the concrete and the busyness of the uh, installation season for swimming pools, we got a wire that's crossed up, no big deal. So make sure our substrate is nice and hard. You have a nice ring to the wall, good and hard concrete. We make sure our substrate is, is solid. The second thing we do before we shoot is we roughen up the bond plane to receive the concrete in a three-dimensional format. So what our guys have done here is they've chipped and they've made this bond plane, instead of flat and smooth, a three-dimensional uneven uh, nooks and crannies grab. So when we shoot our concrete paste, we penetrate into this three-dimensional bond plane. We have a good locking mechanism. So here's where we make sure that this receiving surface is going to be okay for the new material and to make it monolithic and to make it um, intact. Third thing we do, after we have a uh, nice hard surface and we have a three-dimensional bond plane, before we shoot we want to get the concrete into a situation or a, in a, an existence called SSD, saturated surface dry. So before we shoot it, we're going to wet down the walls and keep the walls wet and cooled, not running water, but just wet and cooled where the receive, where the concrete is gonna receive the new shot material. The reason we do this is we wanna take the temperature element out of the concrete when we shoot new material on there. So if this was hot and beating in the sun, uh, A, we clean it off and it's so it's all the pores are open, but B, it's a cooling technique. So when we shoot the new material, this isn't so hot to suck the water out of the new material getting shot onto it and it won't change the chemistry what we have uh, up being applied to the surface. So many times you get a delamination or a bond because the, the receiving surface is way too hot and it wicks the water, takes the water out of the new mixture and thus changes the chemistry, the water cement ratio and the chemistry of the paste so it does not have uh, an opportunity to penetrate uh, and bond. Okay, when it's too hot and there's not enough moisture and the temperature isn't controlled, you're taking a huge chance of debond. SSD does that, it cleans the surface, gets you ready, but it also allows the concrete mixture to do its thing without prematurely failing because it got too hot. Okay, we've talked about uh, good hard bond plane, uh, roughening the dimension to a three-dimensional surface, SSD conditioning, getting it prepped, controlling the temperature. With me is Ricky. Ricky's an ACI certified nozzleman in the wet mix process and uh, he, Ricky's going to be spraying the concrete today. So what Ricky has now is he's demonstrating, just by holding the nozzle, the distance between the proper distance between the nozzle and the substrate. ACI says two to six feet at a 90 degree angle. So as Ricky sprays out of this nozzle to this substrate, our angle has got to be 90 degrees. So if Rick's going to, put it over your shoulder, Rick. If Rick's going to hold the nozzle over his shoulder, he's got to make sure that if he's going to shoot in this corner, he moves himself this way. And if he's going to go down a long, he's just going to go down a long wall and step, but he's got to be at a 90 degree angle within two to six feet. Okay. Uh, all right, if I grab your nozzle. Mm -hmm. I mean, some dudes don't like other dudes grabbing their nozzles, so you just let me know. Oh, yeah, all, right. all right, thanks. Um, if he holds it at his waist, it's the same type of angle, the same distance. And he'll probably hold it at his waist when he starts shooting on the floor coming up. Now you can see the form boards that Ricky's put on. We need two inches. So we have a form across the top, form on the side, and we're gonna go all the way to the skimmer down on the other side. But all we need is two inches. So we're gonna start at the bottom and work our way up. And, and the reason we start at the bottom 
is we don't want to start at the top and have rebound and overspray cover what we've already just cleaned off. So we want to start and work or we have to let gravity work for us. Okay, uh, last thing before we're going to start the shoot is Ricky's got a helmet, safety glasses, steel-toed boots. He's uh, got covering on his legs and stuff. Whether or not you cover up your arms, it's up to you. You can wipe the concrete off. Your nozzle's in good condition. He's checked the ear ring. He's checked the um, clamps. He's got our clamp on here. He's got a whip check. The air's ready to go. We have a valve for our air. It's on and off. When you shoot wet and even in dry shotcrete, you have to make sure that you have enough air. Air's the key for blowing it on there. So we're not going to throttle our air down in wet mix for halfway just because the compressor is pushing out a lot of air. If it's pushing out a lot of air, we back up. But we got full air. We got a clean air ring. So when we have the extrusion that's getting pumped through there, we will make sure that that compressor breaks that sausage into a particle by particle basis. So Ricky can, in fact, make sure that the shot process penetrates all these nooks and crannies. This will be monolithic shotcrete. It doesn't matter how long we let this surface sit. It doesn't matter how long the pool sits. We can come back a year from today, do this exact thing, and this will still be monolithic. This is not a cold joint. The ACI says a cold joint is a lack of commingling. When we pour a sidewalk one day, come back the next day, there's a lack of commingling. What Ricky's going to do today is he's going to mingle this material coming out of his nozzle into the receiving substrate so they penetrate together and they thus eliminate that cold joint and, and, and thus eliminate that definition for a non-cold joint or a lack of commingling. We are going to mingle the two concretes together. One's in a plastic state, one's in a hardened state, but that process allows us to not have a cold joint. We do this with swimming pools, through subway system, wine caves, and grottos. It doesn't matter. Shotcrete's the ideal way to place concrete uh, at high velocity and achieve what you want. And so something like this, when we get into a pool situation, we're like, ah, geez, we forgot to move a wire. It's easily corrected. Okay, here we are with the uh, beginning of the shot process. Ricky is shooting a uh, good angle, 90 degrees or pretty close to it. And we got very good velocity coming off. He's two to six feet from the receiving substrate. You can see in the sun and the, the pitcher, the stuff bouncing off, overspray coming off, and the rebound bouncing back and forth off of that roughened substrate. We took a cut saw and just made a checkered pattern into it and then chipped each square of the cut saw to give us a different three-dimensional bond plane. But you can see the paste is penetrating very, very nicely, and the uh, rebound is bouncing off. Um, like we've discussed in class a number of times. You, you want to make sure that the aggregate hits that receiving surface, leaves a paste, the paste penetrates in a three-dimensional bond plane, and starts your locking mechanism, which is shockery. So the, the subsequent or the following aggregate out of the shot sticks into that built-up paste. That's why there's no cold joint. Uh, word to the wise, you guys, we talked about safety before. So yellow is usually good for hard hat, but if you wear yellow... As a shirt, it's not a slimming color. So just all you heavy set boys like me, don't wear, don't wear yellow. Here we are shooting again, good material. You can see the sun hitting how and show you the dust and the overspray and some of the stuff that you got to be careful of and uh, making sure that it doesn't doesn't stick. You could you could see that you know Ricky's doing a good job and letting everything bounce to the floor. And we only have a wall connection here. It's not like wall floor. So the stuff bouncing off is going to end up on the floor or in, the, in this case the dirt or underneath the pipes or on top of the pipes. So we'll make sure we backfill carefully. We'll make sure all the drains and the pipes stay intact. But a, a renovation like this of the brand new pool wall because it's not thick enough is easily accomplished. Okay, the material's on the wall. You saw the shot in the videos. Uh, good shot, good velocity, good angle into the roughened uh, bond plane, three-dimensional. Wilson's on it now, tearing off the extra. We got micro-synthetic fibers to help us with the surface texture and the, and the cohesiveness of the material. So it's monolithic, no cold joints. We got our thickness that we wanted to get and uh, we accomplished what we tried to do today. So a good example of good shot material with no time limit, no cold joints, monolithic shooting.